Hello there. So I am recording this early and posting at noon because I have a hot date with my grandma today. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm hopping in here and sharing with you some very specific things that you can do in order to lose the weight you want to um, after 40, after um, hormone or um, menopause struggles, menopause brain right here. Um, a couple of things that you can do in order to work towards your results. So for those of you that don't know me, I am Lindy Slaybaugh. Um, I had a hysterectomy, it was four years ago in February. I had, um, I was diagnosed with fibroid uh, tumors in my uterus and I have still endometriosis on my rectal wall. So when I first started my infertility journey, I was on a Lupron shot every 28 days. I did that for six months in hopes to shrink the fibroids. It did not work. Um, so after my hysterectomy, my doctor always told me that your healing in any situation has to do 80% with your mindset. I had been bleeding for almost two years, like didn't leave the house bleeding. So after my hysterectomy, you know, I had dealt with the fact that I was never going to be able to carry a baby, which is still horrible sometimes. Um, but I just really knew that this was something that I could, God could use in my life in a positive way. Um, if I chose to glorify him through my struggle. So after my hysterectomy, right away, I felt amazing. Like for the first probably six to eight months, I like, I wasn't bleeding. I was doing lots of things. I had met my now husband and we were in the early stages of our relationship. Um, and <laughs> about eight months in, I started to feel some, some changes in my body. Well, I had a full hysterectomy, but I have my ovaries. So a partial hysterectomy apparently is when they um, take the fallopian tube or something like that. Anyway, so I still have my ovaries, but I was just, I was really exhausted. I was lethargic in the middle of the day. I had gained 30 pounds, 27 pounds, but you know, rounding up 30 pounds. And I was just really feeling frustrated. And a client I had at the time was getting hormone replacement pellets. And so I, Daryl and I went up to the doctor and I started on a hormone replacement therapy regimen. Um, and I've been on that now for two years. I did take one break this last March. I skipped my, her December, I skipped my insertion then because we were considering surrogacy. And our infertility doctor wanted to have a baseline of my numbers before my blood work and um, after my pellets were out of my system. So I skipped one. And I was thinking, okay, I've been doing this replacement for about 18 months now. Maybe I can just wean off of it. And within, by that, that March, when I got my next insertion, um, I was feeling all of my old symptoms. I was lethargic. I had brain fog. I was just really struggling. So there are so many different things that you can do for hormone, hormone therapy, hormone replacement. Um, I will never tell you that nutrition and exercise is the only thing that has allowed me to reach my goals. A lot of that is through prayer, but it's also through these bio T supplements I get at Revolution Health in Sturgis. I actually just got my um, insertion yesterday. So a woman, a woman's testosterone should be between 150 and 200. My testosterone was at 20, which is why I had zero energy, strength to do anything. I had very little focus. It didn't matter how much I was exercising. My body was not changing. Okay. So we've got to know our bodies. We've got to look inward. And when I tell you that I'm doing all of the right things for the most part, I'm getting my vitamins, I'm drinking my water, I'm sleeping seven to eight hours a, week, a night, I'm um, exercising, you know, that four to five days a week, most, most times five to six days a week, uh, with one of those days being active, rest, walking, stretching, etc. So I can tell you that if you're struggling with menopause result or menopause struggles, I get it. I was thrown into menopause far earlier than a normal woman is supposed to. So when I tell you I relate to the struggles that you're facing in menopause, I'm not just saying that. Like I had a hysterectomy at 37 and it has thrown my body into a loop. So probably about a year ago, um, I was just really feeling sorry for myself. And I 
was in my prayer time and I'm like, okay, Lord, why is this all happening to me? Like I'm trying to honor you with my choices and my body and the things that I'm doing to move and eat. And he reminded me quite clearly that day um, that I was not leaning into my nutrition plan. I was eating in a deficit. I had been eating in a deficit for years at that point. And I, he told me that I needed more fuel. In the fall last year, I was doing P90X. He told me I needed more fuel. But as females, I know that the fear of gaining weight, the fear of eating more food, the shame we feel when we woke up after a night of eating things that maybe aren't on our meal plan, the shame of following a fad diet and having to get off of it because of brain fog or it's making you sick. I had that with keto. Um, and then gaining all the weight that I'd lost plus some. There is something that goes on in a woman's body that tells her she needs to look a certain way, weigh a certain amount, this and that and the other. And I am here to tell you that Jesus loves us exactly the way we are. Find comfort in that. The scale does not measure how good of a person you are. The scale does not measure if you are struggling with hormones or menopause or stress. The scale does not tell the muscle strength that you have built if you are on a fitness plan. The scale is not a determiner of our worth. Okay, now let me be very clear. While yes, Jesus loves us as we are, if we are starving ourselves, if we're binging and purging, if we're using sugar and caffeine or drugs or shopping or social media as a band-aid for our life, it's an idol. We place so many idols in our life above him. And when we can ask him that Psalm 139, 23 and 24 verse, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me, know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. If you are brave enough and strong enough and courageous enough to pray that prayer, he's going to put the things in your life that you need to get out of there so that he can take root and do in, the, in you the thing that he wants to do. We reap what we sow. If yesterday you reaped a harvest of movement and nutrition, today, tomorrow, six months down the road, you're going to reap the benefit of that. If yesterday you reaped a harvest of shame and self-criticism and fear and doubt, that's what you're feeling today. But 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 tells us we can take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. If you are not leaning into God's word, prayer, and Holy Spirit direction in your health and fitness plan, you are missing the key to everything. I saw a Joyce Meyer sermon once a couple of years ago, and she said, you know, I always think it's interesting that people, you know, don't pray for the, the they don't pray for small things. They only pray for the big things. Save my kid, um, pray over cancer or things like that. But we don't pray over the things that we think that God doesn't care about. But if you think about the fact that the God who created you created the entire universe, the world, and everything that we see in it, every bug, creature, body of water, mountain, leaf on a tree, everything. He created it in six days. He spoke creation into existence in six days. If you think that he does not care about you being overweight, over the way that you talk to yourself, over the way that you use sugar instead of him, he cares. You're vastly underestimating the love that he has for you because he doesn't want you to live suffering. He wants you to live full and obedient and grateful and living all of the things that you have dreamed to live. He has huge plans for your life. He has huge purpose for your life. And when we are so stuck in the fact that we're not where we want to be physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, in relationships or whatever, he cannot do the work in us that he wants to do. I gained a hundred pounds because I was trying to control the things that went into my mouth into my mind, into my body, into my heart, and I did not let him do the work. And I paid the consequences. I still pay the consequences of my choices. We reap what we sow. When we sow good seeds of nutrition and self-love and the way we talk to ourselves and talk to others and the way we move our bodies and the way we do all of these things are a way that we honor him and the purpose that he's placed on our life. When we don't speak nice things to ourselves or nice things to our reflection in the mirror, 
it breaks his heart. He cares about every aspect of your life. I pray every time I'm going somewhere over my outfit. I'm a sweaty person. I've been sweaty since I started my period 25 years ago. I used to have to take an extra shirt to high school with me because I would pit through my shirt. I'm pitting through my tank top right now. Now today I say, okay, Lord, lead me and guide me in the thing that I need to wear today so that I'm comfortable, I'm confident, and my choices reflect and glorify you. I already know what I'm wearing today to go on a girl shopping day with my grandma. He put that on my heart a few days ago. Monday I was going out to dinner for my birthday and he had put an outfit on my heart and I was like, no, I'm not going to wear that. It's Monday. It's, um, we're going to a local restaurant. I'm not going to wear a dress. Wear the dress. I wore the dress. I felt confident. I felt cute. I was comfortable. It was my 42nd birthday by golly. I'm going to wear the dress if he tells me to wear the dress. I pray over my hair. That's what Joyce Meyer said. I pray over my hair. Lord, let my hair. I don't want to waste time on my hair today. I got things to do that I'm going to honor you to do. Tell me what to do with my hair. Lord, tell me what I need to eat for breakfast. Lord, tell me what workout to do. That's a prayer I've been praying today. I can't do glute work for the next three days. What workout am I going to do today that is going to honor my body and the goals that you have placed for me? Tomorrow's weigh-in day. So all the things in my head tell me I need to do this. I need to do that because if I don't do that, I'm not going to reach the goal that I want to reach tomorrow. Those are lies. Doubt, distraction, fear. They are all sometimes of the enemy, but sometimes they're the choices that you have made for years and years and years that are continuing to take root in your life. And they are lies, lies, lies. God's truth is the only truth that matters. I don't feel like exercising this morning. I don't feel like it. It's hot. I'm sweaty. I'm detoxing from the sugar I ate for my birthday last weekend. And I didn't even really eat that much sugar, but it's coming out of me. I can feel it. It's not about doing what we feel. Our feelings are often not in line with, with God's truth. And if we're really honest with ourselves, we know that that's the truth. We've got to allow his truth to take root in our heart. That's why I tattooed this thing on my wrist. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. We talked about the fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. Those are the fruits. I want to bear that fruit to myself first so that I can go out and be that fruit to someone else. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let that speak to you today. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from him, you can do nothing. You can't be in a healthy marriage without Jesus. You can't be in healthy work communication with your people without Jesus. You can't be a good parent or a good friend without Jesus. You cannot reach your fitness and nutrition goals without him. Apart from him, we can do nothing. I have learned this the hard way over and over and over and time and time again. Leaning into that truth last fall, realizing that I was not being obedient and I hadn't been being obedient for a really long time. Your body can only be in deficit to calories for so long. It's not healthy. I started working with my um, paid clients on a macro plan. So I have a formula on my computer and I type in their age, um, height, and weight and their activity level, either light or moderate. And that comes up with a macro plan. And I'm not sure the formula that this uses. I wish I could. I've tried to figure it out a thousand times, but I can't, I can't figure it out. But it's on my computer. I have it. And I, I create these programs, um, meal plans for my clients. So for a lot of them, they've been eating in a deficit. I'm asking them if they're exercising four to five days a week to work, eat in their maintenance calories. So for me, I'm eating anywhere from 2,000 to 2,300 calories a day, 2,200 to 2,300 calories a day. I eat 168 grams of protein. I eat 226 grams of carbs, and I think it's like 72 or 74 grams of fat. So in the morning, I just ate my breakfast. I had three scrambled eggs with two cups of spinach and a whole entire Dave's Killer Everything bagel with two tablespoons of cream cheese. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't eat that much in a day. 
That is just my breakfast. That gives me the energy and focus that I need in order to complete my workout in a timely way that makes me feel confident. Yesterday, I didn't have time to eat before my workout. And by the time I, like I didn't even finish my second workout because I, like I was sick. I needed food right now. Normally I work out 30 minutes and I take my dog for a walk. I didn't have time for all of that yesterday. So I made a shake. Our superfood shake is like the best thing ever in the whole entire world. And I loaded it up with two cups of spinach, a half a cup of cooked sweet potato, a cup of pineapple. I had almond milk in there. It's vanilla protein powder. And I loaded it up. I sucked it down. Then I made a bagel and I ate a bagel because it wasn't quite enough food. By 8.30 yesterday morning, I had burned a thousand calories and I was hungry. Something else I really want you to be aware of is the idols that you place in your life when it comes to your fitness and nutrition plan. If you wear a smart tracker or a fit tracker like I do, that is not a determiner of your calories that you eat through the day. I burn on average 23 to 2400 calories a day and I eat about 2300 calories a day. If you are exercising, moving intentionally for at least 30 minutes, three to four to five days a week, Stop letting this be the determiner of your food choices. It does not take into account everything. Stop wearing it if you need to stop wearing it, if you're obsessing about it. I made myself take a break from my fit tracker. I don't sleep in it. I take it off during times of the day. Sometimes I feel Holy Spirit conviction to take it off. Yesterday, I didn't put it on in the morning and I took it off while I was doing um, some work. I do not want to be a slave to a watch that does not know anything about me. It is a tool, kind of like our social media. We have to take responsibility for our choices and our food and how we move our bodies. And we can't do it based on our feelings. As soon as I get off of this call with you, I'm going to push play on my workout. I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to choose joy in the movement. If you have ever hesitated to start a workout program, I'm gonna give you a clue of what I do. And as soon as I end this video, I'm gonna do this thing. I turn on my workout, I let the music fire me up, I drink my, my pre-workout, my go-go juice, and then I go get dressed. And by the time I get in here, I'm feeling that tingle a little bit. Five minutes. If you stick with your workout for five minutes, you will finish. Eat a little something before you lift weights. If you're doing cardio, if it's a cardio day for you, eat a banana. If you're lifting weights, you need a good balance of protein, carbs, and healthy fats before you eat. Not a lot of healthy fats. You should not be, if you are a woman, a woman over 40 or you're struggling with menopause, hormone struggles, you should not eat a lot of healthy fat in your pre-workout or post-workout meal. A very small amount. We talked about this uh, Tuesday. When you carry a lot of stress, it holds on in the form of cortisol, which is a stress hormone and it sucks to your belly. And if you eat a lot of fat before or after your workout, you cannot break down that visceral fat. So little bits of healthy fats before and after. You're rarely always going to feel like it. I rarely always, I rarely always feel like exercising. I do not feel like working out today, but I know that I'm going to move my body a little bit. Sometimes it's just stretching. That's fine too. If it wasn't so hot out, I should have taken my dog for a walk an hour ago. But it's too hot for both of us out there. I'm not doing that because, you know, it's just not really good for us. Find something that makes you feel empowered. Stick with it five minutes. If you don't feel like doing it, drink your go-go juice. Push play on your workout. Ask Alexa to play some Jesus jams. Just start five minutes. I don't care if you suck the first five minutes. I don't care if you suck the whole time. Doing something is better than doing nothing. If you want to get up and dance in your living room intentionally for 20 to 30 minutes, I got lots of dance cardio on here. Just move your body. Just move your body. Choose joy in the moment. And when you don't feel like it, take that thought captive, make it obedient to Christ and ask him to give you what you need. Lord, give me what I need.
You are worthy of every goal that you have set in your life if it came through Holy Spirit conviction. Get up and move because your kids are going to emulate the habits that you set for them. If you're feeding them fast food, if you're not moving your body, if you're carrying extra weight, if you're starving yourself or body shaming yourself, those activities, those actions are what your kids are going to see and that's what they're going to do. So if you can't start for you right now, start for them. Every morning, wake up a few minutes early. Spend those first time, first moments in prayer. This morning, I told God, I'm not asking you for anything today. I'm just going to, I'm just going to pray in gratitude. I prayed in gratitude for things that I, he has done for me. I pray in gratitude for things he has continued to provide for us. And I pray in gratitude for the things that I hope that he will do. Seek his will above your own. He knows your body better than you. And the more you try to control your life in any facet, but especially your health and fitness, you're going to stress out because you can't eat the foods that you love because you're forcing yourself to do a workout that you hate. Find something that fills you up. I hate my fitness pal. I used to log my fitness pal when I weighed 246 pounds and it told me to eat 1200 calories and I was constantly in starvation mode. So when you don't eat enough, your body has to reach back in itself for fuel. So it reproduces that fat cells, those fat cells that are in your belly, that are in your butt, that are in your, the dimples in your legs, your belly, your body reproduces those fat cells. So if you've noticed that you're starving yourself and you're not losing any weight, that's why you're actually going to gain weight eventually. But the plan I follow now for my clients, we use my fitness pal, but I tell them what to plug in. So my, my calorie range is between 22 and 2300 calories. So I have a calorie range in between there logged in my fitness pal. We follow a 40, 30, 30 macro plan, 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% healthy fats. So you can go in and customize, but we don't count net carbs. We don't use the exercise. We don't plug our exercise in my fitness pal. So we don't sync that to our fit tracker. We don't sync it anywhere. We don't log those. We put in our calorie bracket, we plug in our grams per macro count. And then after I eat breakfast or while I'm eating breakfast, I go in and I plug in what I'm eating for breakfast. I plug in my shake for lunch, what I think we're probably going to have for dinner. And then I'm always um, plugging in a cup of Greek yogurt, half a cup of cottage cheese and a cup of applesauce. That's like my favorite afternoon snack. I just mix it up all in a bowl. I eat the crap out of it and then my dog gets to lick the bowl and it makes us both very happy. But then accordingly, if you know that you're going out to dinner or you're going to do something with friends that night and you might have a cocktail or you're going to go celebrate a birthday and you're going to have a piece of cake, plug it in. Plug it in. That's the beauty of macros. You're not restricting yourself in any of your favorite food groups. If you know that you're going to go to a Mexican restaurant and you're going to eat chips and salsa, plug it in. I will literally count out 15 chips at the Mexican restaurant and put them on a napkin and that's what I eat. Sometimes I don't even eat chips. Set boundaries with yourself. Who cares if people think you're crazy? They're not carrying the weight of your life. We've got to give up our crap about what other people think about us. I lived in fear because I married into an Amish family and I've wanted this tattoo. I've prayed over this tattoo for five years. And I was worried about what my Amish family in-laws are gonna think about me. You know what, who cares? I know what Jesus says about me and that is what is important. I was judged by a woman at a Christian bookstore here locally in town when I went in last week. Other people's opinions of you have nothing to do with you. Find freedom in that. We seek God's will. Not our spouse's will, not our kids' will, not our parents' will, God's will even above your own. Release control of everything that you think you know about losing weight and getting fit over 40. Eat more food. Body weight exercises, three, four, five times a week. Bands, light weights, no weight, body weight, whatever, something. It is your responsibility to create the habits in your life that you want to teach yourself and the people that you love. You are an example. People are watching you. 
We get to glorify God in these choices in our movement. And when somebody says, wow, I don't know how you stay so focused. You say, you know what? Holy Spirit conviction. That's how. God loves me so much. He didn't want me to live in my pit of excuses. Before, if you've, if you're like, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to exercise and you wake up tomorrow morning and you're like, ugh. I want you to count down from five out loud. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Get up and move your tuchus before you have an opportunity to sit back down. Because in that five seconds, you can psych your brain out. You can make different choices. If you need to do laundry or wash your hair or make food, exercise, whatever. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And then move. You get to live the life that you choose. Choose to honor God with all of your choices and he will make your path straight. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Anytime you say something negative or angry about yourself, you're saying it to the Jesus that lives in you and it hurts his heart. Last thing I'm going to tell you, I have a mirror in my bathroom that I loathe. It points out every dimple, every stretch mark, every imperfection in my body. And it is very easy for me to look in my reflection and say, Ugh, don't do that. In that in that moment, you say, I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me. Thank you for this beautiful body that you have blessed me with. In the morning in my journal, um, it says, tell me one thing you appreciate about your body today. There is so much to be grateful for. Your sight, your senses, your hands and your feet. Some people don't have those blessings. Sometimes we take our lives and our bodies and all of the blessings that we have for granted. If you woke up tomorrow with only what you thanked God for today, what would you have? If you woke up today with only what you thanked God for tomorrow, what would you have? Or today, if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday, what would you have? We take our lives for granted. Oh yeah, life's short. I'm just going to eat and move and do all the things that I want to. Jesus knew he was going to die and he washed Judas's feet the night before Judas was going to betray him. The night before Peter was going to deny him three times, Jesus got down on his hands and knees and he washed their feet. If that doesn't call you to conviction, I really don't know what will. You are worth changing your choices and your life. You are worth doing the hard thing. It is hard. It's not always fun. But neither is being married or raising kids or doing the right thing. Do it anyway. I was reading in Matthew this morning about the narrow gate and the wide gate. Everybody takes the wide gate. Everybody goes to diet culture. Everybody goes to the pill or the shot or the fast and quick way. Don't be like that. Take the narrow gate. Eat more food. Move your body. Choose joy in your struggle. I love that Justin said um, yesterday or the day before that she rocked her burpees, but she struggled in her pike. I guarantee you when Justin started... 35, 40 pounds ago, that she didn't find the burpee things very easy. Little bits of positivity add up over time. The good seeds you plant today, right now, they're going to come to fruition tomorrow and 30 days from now and six months from now and two years from now. You are worth the struggle. Stop selling yourself short. You are beautiful and loved and perfect and fearfully and wonderfully made. Start eating like it. Start acting like it. Start moving like it. Go do something good for yourself today. Once you've watched this video, drop your heart emoji in the comments and tell me your one focus for the next 30 days. Take care. God bless.